My name is Jason Hall Spencer and I work here at the University of Plymouth. I'm on board one of our research boats called Falcon Spirit and that's our marine biology station behind us. And what I've been doing is working with uh, Ro Allen, one of our master's students, on a project about the effects of increasing carbon dioxide levels on the oceans. What myself and Professor Hall Spencer have done is put together a review study examining current evidence of the responses of nuisance and invasive species to ocean acidification. What started us thinking that this might be a a big issue is that I've been diving on uh, underwater volcanoes all over the world um, where carbon dioxide bubbles out of the seabed like a jacuzzi and wherever I go to these places there's often lots and lots of jellyfish in the water and invasive types of seaweeds and what I think we might be doing is opening the door to this problem worldwide. So what we're going to do now is show you some of the invasive seaweed species that we're seeing right here in Plymouth and talk to you a little bit about what we've covered in the review. Invasive macroalgae species, such as this wakame, look set to benefit from the increased availability of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate ions associated with ocean acidification. Current evidence also suggests that harmful algal bloom forming species will grow at a faster rate and be more toxic in an acidified ocean. Traits possessed by nuisance mollusks, echinoderms and crustaceans will help them survive in an acidified ocean. These traits are generalist feeding strategies, fast reproductive rates and a wide range of environmental tolerances. Plymouth's got a long history of marine biology research and back in the 1950s an inventory was written of all the species that live here. Since then, large organisms like this Japanese seaweed have started to, to take over in the region and we think this is partly due to increasing carbon dioxide levels. This seaweed uses carbon dioxide for its growth. What we are worried about is that as carbon dioxide levels ramp up in the atmosphere, that carbon dioxide enters the ocean and makes it more conducive to the life of things like jellyfish and seaweeds. Now this is a concern because coral reefs are corroded easily by increased CO2 levels. What we don't want is that stinging jellyfish are on the beaches wherever we go. So the message of the paper is that it's not all lost and something can be done about it. The key thing to do is reduce carbon dioxide emissions.